Jurassic World, The Big Catch. A short story set after the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Captain Jack Cole quickly moved through the marina, heading towards the small fishing boat which was docked on the jetty at the far side of the port. The area was bustling with activity, with vehicles moving back and forth, and with small and large ships alike unloading their cargo as they prepared to moor up at the facility for the next few days. A warning had recently been issued by the Royal Navy, advising that all vessels in the area of Malden remain in port until further information was provided. There were whisperings about there being a directive from the UN to do with some strange animal sightings occurring across the globe, but Jack had never been one to buy into the back-channel chatter and was determined that some anonymous order from higher above would not prevent him from putting food on the table for his family. As he arrived at the small fishing vessel, his crewmates Tony Leveller and Rose McCarthy were already busy on deck of the ship preparing the cages for which would allow them to catch vast quantities of fish once they made it out deeper into the ocean. As Cole hopped from the jetty onto the vessel, Leveller turned to face him. Cap, the ship is almost ready for departure. Since we were rushing though, we weren't able to grab all the nets, but we've got enough for a decent haul. Cole nodded to the younger man. Well done on getting everything prepared so quickly. I don't know when they're locking down the ports, it'll be good to get one final trip in. The port authorities seem to be far too busy to take notice of us, and a lot of the Navy are out on an exercise currently, so I doubt they'll be back anytime soon. Rose finished untying one of the ropes which was holding the vessel against the jetty and turned to look at the two men who were already talking. Are we sure about this? There must be a reason for the sudden closure. It does seem rather chaotic around here. Maybe it's safer to stay at home for now. The younger woman was clearly concerned about the trip. Ah, don't be stupid, Rose. It's just scaremongering. I'm sure we'll be fine. I've been doing this for seven years. Nothing's ever happened to me. Think about it, we'll have access to a whole quota while everyone else is in port. This could be the catch of a lifetime. Well, all right then, let's get moving before I change my mind. The three-person crew set themselves about preparing the rest of the small vessel for departure. Cole took the helm and began to check all of the instruments were ready for their departure, whilst Rose went below deck, going through all of the supplies which were loaded into the small onboard kitchen. Leveller spent some time at the front of the ship, raising the anchor and untying the vessel so it would begin to gently drift into the open water just beyond the mouth of the marina. As they began to drift out into the open waters, a siren could be heard getting closer. A single police car with an officer inside skidded to a halt at the edge of the marina. The officer threw open the door and began to run towards the boat, waving his hands. Don't go out there! It's too dangerous! Get back to shore! Now! Cole looked over towards him for a moment and then looked back at the instruments. Come back! You don't know what's out there! Came a final call from the man's voice as it faded into the gentle sound of the ocean waves. A few moments later, the lone fishing vessel was gliding over waves as it headed out further into the ocean. In the distance, thick grey clouds could be seen looming over the ocean, and the choppier waves could be seen cascading over each other as they collided. Cole didn't want to admit it, Rose may have been right. This wasn't going to be a particularly easy journey, but then again, this crew had been through some rough patches and always made it through out to the other side. This time was going to be no different. Satisfied that the vessel was approaching the correct course, he flicked a switch which activated a temporary autopilot to keep the boat on its chosen course and then proceeded to head below deck where a small bunk cabin at the rear of the vessel would allow him to get some well-deserved sleep. He smiled at the thought of his big catch as he shut his eyes. Cole was woken by the sound of heavy rain hammering the vessel. Lightning could be heard crackling outside, and it was clear that they had arrived at the storm which they'd seen brewing on the horizon earlier. He rubbed his eyes for a moment and then pulled himself off the bunk and climbed back up onto the deck, 
Rain lashed down and Leveller could be seen in the yellow raincoat attempting to pull the cage back onto the deck as he slipped over his own feet. He fell and slammed onto the deck and leant over the edge, catching the cage before it fell into the raging torrent below him. Cole sprinted over, diving, and grabbed the man by his legs. Tony! Let it go! You're going to get pulled overboard! No! I've got it, Cat. We're going to get our catch. At that moment, the ship lurched, with the rough waves almost feeling like a large mass passing under the vehicle as it rolled in the water. Tony dropped the cage and plunged towards the edge of the vessel's deck, reaching out desperately for some kind of leverage. Cole was able to swing his hand out, catching the man before he plummeted over the edge. Got you! Let's get inside! The two men sprinted across the deck and half walked, half fell into the kitchen directly below. Rose sat at the table watching them as they fell over and lay on their backs in a pool of murky grey water. She chuckled. I told you we should have stayed at the port. Get up. I've just made some stew on the stove. Bowls are on the side. Help yourselves. The two men got up and proceeded over to the side where the large black ceramic pot was heating on the stove. They grabbed a ladle and spewed the content into three bowls, passing one back to Rose before they sat back down. The men ate hungrily and Rose watched them, locking eye contact with the captain. Why were you so keen to get back out here, anyway? The captain looked at the floor and then looked back up. Oh, I don't know, things haven't been great with Sarah and I. Some things just don't work out. The house is a pretty toxic environment right now. I don't want that for James. Figured I could get out of the house for a bit and catch my thoughts. He turned, looking through the porthole as the waves continued to bash the vessel. I'm sorry. I didn't think it would be like this. I didn't know what we were getting into. I just guess it would be better than what's dealing with at home, you know? Rose smiled at him gently. It's okay, we'll get through this. And when we're back at shore, you can figure things out. Cole smiled back. He turned to talk to Leveller when his eyes widened, spotting something massive through the porthole. Before he had time to say anything, it collided with the boat and the vessel rolled violently in the water. The dishes were sent flying and the stew pot smashed on the floor, cracking into a hundred little pieces which flew through the air as the vehicle continued to shake. Paintings fell from the walls and the boat creaked and groaned as it settled back onto the water. The lights flicked out for a moment and then flashed back on and the three crew members looked at each other, sheer terror in their eyes. What the hell was that? I've never seen anything like it, it was huge. We need to get out of here now. Beverly's voice was cut off as he disappeared into the black void. Cole had to take a minute to process things. One minute, Leveller had been sat beside him and the next moment, Cole had been lurched backwards as the ship began to explode inwards. Wooden fragments and bits of furniture and crockery smashing everywhere. He felt himself flying in slow motion. Cole realised that he could now feel the rain on his face and could hear it a lot more heavily than he could when he was sat down moments ago. It took him a few seconds to process the fact that the space Leveller had occupied was now filled with a dark grey mass. As he looked, more for a moment, he noticed a wide yellow eyeball blink at him. Sharp jagged teeth tearing through the hull of the vessel, splintering it into two. His stomach knotted and he wanted to vomit, but he was frozen in terror as he smashed back against the wall and lay watching things unfold. The fishing boat was now fully split in half, with rubble and wreckage floating above the water as the creature dived back into the depths below. Cole took a moment to take things in and then looked across. Rose was trapped in the front half of the vehicle, lying unconscious underneath some debris from the kitchen unit, her forehead bloodied and bruised. His vision was blurred, but he was confident she was moving. He attempted to move forwards but felt the vessel lurch underneath him and he fell forwards, smacking his head on the wooden floor. There was a dull thud and everything went black. When Cole came to, the second half of the vessel which Rose had been in had disappeared completely. Now all he could see in front of him was rough water strewn with wreckage and debris. Here and there he could see things which hinted of what the vessel had once been. A floating fishing net, a bowl, a shoe. All were sodden and ruined. As he pulled himself back to his feet, 
the situation became clear. His half of the vessel was rapidly sinking into the water and the creature was still below the surface, circling in a big dark mass which was visible through the waves. He didn't know what it was but he knew it killed his crew and that was enough to give him the motivation for what came next. He turned and crawled up the wet floor to the bunk room he'd come from. It was now a right state, with the matches from the bunk up against the wall, revealing what had been hidden below. Cole reached into the frame and removed the harpoon from it, checking the weapon before he turned and crawled back onto the floor of the former kitchen of the ship. He reached over to a piece of the table, which he'd cracked off and fallen next to him. He threw it into the water. Come on! Right here! The dark mass below the water seemed to hesitate for a moment, and suddenly, very quickly, it began to rise, speeding towards the rear portion of the vessel. Cole barely had time to react as the ground around him was struck and it fell away. The harpoon was pulled from his hand and before he could do anything about it, he felt jagged teeth shear through the side of his back, and he knew it would be over soon. A few minutes later the waves began to settle, with the storm passing. The wreckage and debris which still floated on the surface of the water was the only indicator of what had once been a fishing vessel captained by Jack Cole. Amidst the debris and the chaos, a newspaper floated on a wooden plank, sodden and distorted, but its headline still visible. It read, Dinosaurs in the wild. How will you survive? Jurassic World The Big Catch was a short story narrated by Ben at Jurassic Site B. The voice of Captain Cole was performed by Jurassic Collectibles. The voice of Rose was performed by Rachel Cochran Edwards. The voice of Leveller was performed by Dan Cooper. Police Officer by Tom Fishenden. Audio drama written by Tom Fishenden and produced by the Jurassic Park Podcast. Thank you for listening and happy Halloween.